wow, this shit's pretty climactic, dude. I like the new uh, that little opening. So, yeah, it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a fun time. You know, it's just gonna be me and you today. Everybody, welcome. SF Company Hour, right? So it's just me and Alex today. Uh, let's uh, let's get shit started. Let's just you know to the intro. Welcome everybody to the SF Company Hour here on the SF Comic Book Company, uh, SF Comic Book Co. Channel. Uh, I'm your host today, Max Effort Grayson. Uh, with me is the Hondalorian. Uh, it's the reuniting. We're reuniting, Alex. Feels so good. It's uh, optimistic, <laughs> optimistic Prime and Negatron, bro. So uh, Do it. it should be. It should be fun. Um, if anybody, this is pretty much it's. Uh, we're probably the Stephen A. and uh, Skip Bayless of fucking uh, <laughs> of, of this show. Like we do go back and forth. Me, me and Ray are pretty much kind of like Chainsaw and Dave. We share the same brain. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's gonna be a fun time today. Uh, so, how you been, Alex? I've been pretty good, man. Thanks for having me on. Um, glad to be here. Uh, you know, just working a lot, and um, you know, still buying my comic books and. Uh, I just, well, I need to catch up with some TV shows and you know how that goes. Dude, I know how that goes. Yeah. There's a lot of shit that I have been meaning to start, you know, just, yeah. I want to tell Rick Rock, uh, yeah, I'm still going to watch The Expanse, man. It's on the list. There's so much shit that's on the list these days. Uh, it's it's just rough trying to get, trying to get to everything. Uh, hey, Alex, can you see if you can uh, move your camera? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, let know. me see if I can do that. Is it gonna pop? Oh, there it is. There he is. Oh, wait a minute. No. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, what's going on? All right, let's just uh we can we, ah, there it is. There it is, there it is, there it is. Let me see. I already did all the notes for the show today. All I gotta do is some other stuff uh when it comes to it, but you know, so uh yeah, it's gonna be just me and Alex today. Uh unfortunately, Ray's been feeling under the weather, so you know, he decided to sit this one out. So, you know, hopefully our boy feels a lot better coming up and we're able to rock some more shows. Uh, I'm sure, sure he will. It's just, you know, we hate even when we got to work, when we got to do other things, we hate missing doing this show. It's just, it's fun to catch up with friends and it's fun to talk shit. So, yeah. Um, to Ray, you know, we love you. Very little, but we love you. Uh so, yeah, let's uh, let's just start the show, dude. Uh, I, I I don't know if did you get to see that stuff for for Hot Toys? Uh, that thing I, I did the over. Goblin. Yeah, so we're gonna talk first yeah. about the Green Goblin. Uh, you know, this is usually the 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 segment of the show. You know that we like to call. Oh, that's not the one. Where the fuck is it? It's uh, I'm, I'm getting to it. <laughs> it, it. It's it's a work in progress, bro. All of this stuff. Uh, I can't. Let me see. Ah, did he take out figuring it out? I uh, probably uh, no. There it is, right there. It's figuring it out with Ray Doomzilla, not with Ray Doomzilla today. We're gonna be doing it with me, Max Effort Grayson, and the Hondalorian. So you know, the first things I wanna. Uh, it's probably the only thing we're gonna talk about when it comes to the toys because I was just so fucking taken aback by this. So this right here, uh, dude, that looks fucking dope. Uh, yeah, I, I love. You see how near the hip it got even like the the bunching how the leather would kind of bunch up and look a little bit folded uh, i just think this is an amazing uh an amazing hot toy other than the fact that it's uh the sam raimi uh helmet which i've never been a fan of i do love the glider and i do love the rest of the rest of the look of the suit uh it's a good original suit me for me, I just I don't dig that particular version of Goblin, uh, and I love this. You can you can kind of see the yeah. the Willem Dafoe fake right there. Yeah. yeah, dude. And yeah, it, it, this is even a more telling mark right here. It's uh, it's fucking, it's it's blurred out his face. So I'm not sure if they haven't defined 
the the look of goblin just yet but i think this is dope would i buy it i'm not sure i think i'm probably going to hold out for the no way home goblin i did like you know willem dafoe doing you know the goblin face you know kind of look and uh because willem, willem dafoe's face so super expressive uh but yeah. I, I love the hood the purple hood what'd you think of this one dude oh man i i it's not a bad price um what like 285 285 um, 285 with the for the base and i think the deluxe actually comes with the glider is i want to say 360 370 it's kind of steep for just a 90 you know i mean the the, the the design on the glider it's really fucking dope uh you can see it right here it's yeah. it looks like it might light up uh it's of course it's going to have a stand for it but i don't know uh for for and just for, for just a glider i don't know if i can pay that three pumpkin bombs three pumpkin is that what it comes with just three pumpkin bombs yeah the yeah, weapons okay um i i don't know man i you know i like the whole uh you know i, I like the way it looks um yeah it's not my favorite goblin but um it looks pretty cool i mean if you like the movie and um you know it yeah it looks really cool i i i dig it um I, I was gonna say that it would look good next to your uh, Heath Ledger Joker. It will, yeah, it would. <laughs> it, it, it's it, a really, villain, it, it, dude. I mean, honestly, Joker is the only villain that I have. But there's there's so many other villains that I do want. I I do want the Norman Osborn from No Way Home. Uh, yeah, I actually thought about it. I want to see what it looks like once it's made. I'm sure they're gonna make it. But evil Doctor Strange from uh, the multi uh, the multiverse of madness. Oh, yeah. You know, we got to see a quick glimpse of him in at, at the in the end credits for No Way Home. Uh, there's like going to be a litany of villains uh, coming out that I def I definitely would want. Uh, uh, Baron, well, depending on how he looks, Baron Mordo is another one if he actually gets like a fucking good role, good meaty role in this. Uh, but Hot Toys, dude, they, they, they're killing it. It's the sculpts that, that get me. Yeah. The face sculpt. So it's like, yeah. It's just having the eternal look of, like, Willem Dafoe as that character, as the Green Goblin, as Norman Osborn. Uh, I, I would totally fucking dig on, on this character completely. It's, uh, it's so fucking good. Uh, but, like I said, it's out of the two goblins of which ones I would want, I think I'd definitely would go after the no way home rather than that one no knock on uh the design i mean the it's beautiful it's beautiful it, yeah. it's right out of the movie the way it looks the detailing uh the painting the painting on it's fucking great but i i just i i want that i want all those head sculpts of willem dafoe in, yeah in fucking goblin as green goblin just you know the dejected one the fucking crazy looking one uh yeah, dude. I, I I don't know what what other hot toys would you uh, would you be looking forward to as far as uh, the Marvel villains that have uh, showed up. Um, hmm, uh, that's a good one. Uh, well, Spider Man. Uh, gosh, yeah. I I I I think the only one is is the goblin. No Way Home Goblin. Yeah, the No Way Home Goblin is. I mean. Hot toys are expensive, you know, and I don't have any, but I someday I'll get one. And you know, you got to save them those real special characters, you know. Exactly. I wouldn't just you know, get it. I mean, if you have that kind of money or if you have that kind of if that's what you really want and you would just collect hot toys, well, more power to you, but um me, I I don't have a lot of space and I don't have a lot of money, so uh you know i'm i'm going to save it for a real special character and uh any any one any recent ones would be the no way home goblin no way home excellent. goblin yeah. yeah i agree with that yeah, uh, yeah. i'd like to that, see that's, that's jamie that's fox it. too the jamie fox i, I was thinking the... about that it's, it's he actually his costume and uh you know the redesigning and everything was pretty cool if they could have some kind of light effect where the electricity the electric head? Kind of show, yeah. uh -huh. that, that would, would be, be dope. yeah that would be a, a, a you know a deal maker you know 
that would be yeah. something that I definitely want to, you know, consider as well. Um, what what is the average price for a hot toy, anyways? Well, it depends. I think if you jump in early, uh, like if if you get it on a ground level when it comes to the pre orders, they're usually about two. I want to say about two eighty standard. Depending yeah. on how low the character is or how the popularity is, I think I've seen them as low as 220. I know that I bought my crow up there, uh, there, Eric Draven. You can kind of vaguely see. Oh him yeah. There. Uh, I got him not through Sideshow Collectibles. I think I got him at a Comic Con or a Toy Con, and I was lucky enough to get the guy. I think for 200. I think was it 180 or 200. I, I just remember pulling out uh, either nine or 10 tw- uh, 1020s and just giving it to him like, here, take my money. I want this. Um, so, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of great hot toys coming out. There's a lot of great villains in the Marvel Universe. I, I just, yeah. I'm looking forward to this one, just looking at it, maybe when Dre and uh, Six Scale Reviews review it. I'm sure they're going to get this one. But I think I'm going to hold out. Because I do love the villains of the universe, of the Marvel Universe. I think I would hold out for uh, No Way Home Green Goblin. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I, well, I agree. So yeah, so you know that was a little toy talk. You know that was a that's about it for me. I I, I am a toy aficionado, uh, figure aficionado, not too much like Ray and uh, the guys from Six Scale. Uh, I'm very. This is you know shit. I, I if I ha- if I could have a Lionel, I'd probably have it. You know, it's just oh, yeah. shit that I like Thundercats and Gobots. I'm looking maybe that I might try to get a G1. Uh, a G1 Megatron. What I definitely want is the G1 Starscream, a uh, Generation 1 Starscream, <laughs> yeah. uh, actual die cast, you know, the fucking my, my hero uh, of the Transformers universe. Uh, let's go to the chats real quick. Just say hello. Uh, Krista Carlson, hello, geeky nerds. Looking forward to the show. So are we, Krista. So are we. Um, we have, uh, you know, Lori, evening gents. Where's Ray? Ray is feeling a little under the weather, so we, we decided to take the reins and uh, snatch the show from him today. Uh, so, no, just kidding. We just we wanted to get the show done this week, and, uh, you know, show must go on whether one of us can't make it. Uh, I know I've not been able to make it due to sometimes I, I almost overslept. I wasn't feeling too good a couple times. Uh, work. So, you know, we do want to do this show, but uh, at the same time, you know, life does interfere with us and says, fuck you, you can't do it. Uh, let me see. Uh, we also have Lori with, uh, luckily, Comic-Con has great deals. Yeah, they do. People come uh, with all their stuff, you know, in their backpacks or their duffel bags. These, the, these uh, the people who set up their stations at the Comic-Con, these vendors. And I, I want them to go home with nothing. But nothing but a big wad of cash. That's what they need to go home with. Uh, hopefully, they don't undersell anything. Uh, they get a good price. They offer really good prices at these places, and they offer really good deals. Sometimes you can get uh, a couple of hot toys if you can try to lump them together and you know knock a few bucks off. It's easier for them to get maybe seven hundred for two or three hot toys than try to sell you know each hot toy individually for like three hundred a piece. Uh, so let me see what else did I have on the docket here. All right. Oh, you know, before though, you know what? Honestly, I, I do want to say, if you guys don't hit like and subscribe, you know, there's gonna be some kid out there who's gonna not get bitten by a radioactive spider, not become Spider Man, and not move on uh, with his, you know, great responsibilities. So make sure you hit that like button. All right. You know. It's uh, we want to make sure that these people get their superpowers. We want to make sure that you know we have things to read about. So you know, contribute to the cause. Hit that like button. Make sure some kid gets bitten by a spider. Please, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we we need superheroes, folks. We need superheroes. Uh, so first, real, real quick. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Real quick. Uh, speaking of hot toys, do you think they're gonna have a a dark side from the Justice League spider cut? <sighs> Oh man! Right, because I was thinking that would be pretty cool. That would you be know, Dark Side is always an awesome character. That would be amazing. I would love them to come out with uh, with a Dark Side from the Snyderverse. I'd actually like. I'd love a fucking Desaad from that movie. Desaad, oh yeah, Desaad's fucking uh, design was really quick. He was on yeah. screen for just a little bit, 
but the yeah. sod the sod looked dope uh so yeah i i would love uh dark side I, you know what they you know what it is i think hot toys uh not to sound like an asshole but they got a hard on for marvel uh they <laughs> And Marvel, we all. <laughs> yeah, a lot, Marvel releases a lot of good movies. Uh, yeah. Not saying that DC doesn't. DC releases, they release fan stuff. You know, they're not they're not going for the masses. Uh, they're releasing a, good, a lot of good fan stuff. But I would love Dark Side. I'd love the Sod. I'd love their take on Granny Goodness. Uh, we've already seen Steppenwolf. Eh. I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't thrilled yeah. with with the design, and I don't know if I'd want a uh, Steppenwolf hot toy. I definitely would want a Dark Side. Good call on that one, dude. Dark Side would be fucking dope. Yeah. 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 So you know, if you're thinking about villains, right? Like, well, no, that's yeah, exactly. That's what I was talking about. Like, uh, I know we're always, we talked about Marvel, but as far as like DC villains, um, yeah, I'm, I'd be looking forward to seeing what uh, Black Adam has to offer. I'd be looking forward oh, yeah. to what uh, Shazam Thunder, what is it, Thunder of the Gods? Something, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'm looking forward to see what their villain looks like there. Uh, I'm looking for, I would like to see what the reverse Flash is going to look like in the Flash movie, if they do reverse Flash. I'm not sure which Flash they're going to do or what the villain's going to be. I hope it's not reverse. It's like I always said, it's, I'm tired of this, you know, uh, the, ex the dark side of the hero kind of thing. No, mm -hmm. just me. Just give me Captain Cole. Give me Captain Boomerang. Uh, Mirror Captain Master. Cole. Yeah, give me the Trickster. Give me some fucking. All, just give me, give me the good rogues from, uh, from DC, or, or from the Flash uh, gallery. It, it, it'd be nice. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can't have. Every, I know everybody loves the Joker, but Batman's got a litany of villains. You know, I'd like to see a Riddler. Paul Dano's Riddler. Yeah, we'll eventually see. when we'll it comes see. out. Uh, I I know we were gonna talk. This is not on the docket, but let's talk about that uh, that Morbius man. I know you said you were excited about it. Oh, I was no, I was joking. Oh, were you joking? <laughs> okay, I, I you know par, part of me thinks I I might get excited depending on what the reshoots are gonna have. I know they I know they brought in a, a couple of guest stars. I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't seen No Way Home. And if you haven't seen No Way Home, please go fucking watch it. Uh, because they they do have a couple of characters from the Sony uh, from Marvel from Sony that are going to be you know coming back you know we know we all know that Venom made an appearance at the end of Venom uh, Let There Be Carnage but yeah. I, I I definitely want to see what Sony has in the, on their plate especially that we know that they've done reshoots we know that they've just done Morbius they have. Uh, Craven coming up on the docket with uh, Aaron Aaron Johnson, the guy who played oh, Quick, yeah. Quicksilver yeah. from uh, Avengers Two. So we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. Let me take Laurie's chat off because you know right now it's yeah Laurie no sorry no more uh, yeah so uh, it, it'd be interesting to see what what they're gonna offer as far as villains go. DC needs to, to just just make good movies. Just make good yeah. movies, you know. So, you know, talking about uh, making good movies, we're going to move over to uh, Guillermo del Toro releasing a teaser uh, for his Pinocchio project coming on Netflix. Dude, did you get a chance to see this? I did. I um, I saw the, the what is it? Uh, the, not the full, it's not a full trailer. It's just a teaser. It's a teaser. Yeah, it's a teaser. Yeah, teaser trailer. And, um, yeah, it looks good, man. I mean... You know Guillermo del Toro. He he is like he he's just an amazing kind of like visionary director. You know he has a, a he takes like from comic books and from like other different types of art um, and and just puts them in his movies. And he just I I think that it's perfect for him to to try his hand at animation. Um, it looks, it looks really interesting. I, I, um, I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, Pinocchio is always a great story too, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. When, when does that come out? I heard it's going to be coming out. I'm trying to find a, 
a release date. Let me see. Uh, open. The, I was looking at a release date. I think they were saying December, or I'm not sure if. Or if it oh was, wow! Or, yeah, because it was it was talked about a long time ago. This is from like 2008. Uh, since they've been talking about this, the first time I heard about it. But it looks like it's going to be in December 2022. I understand why. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's stop motion. That stuff takes a while to to do, and the imagination of Guillermo del Toro, his. I can't wait yeah. to see what his creatures are going to look like, especially in a stop motion. Uh, what was the character's name that uh, that was talking? Sebastian J. Cricket. That's Jiminy uh, Cricket, right? Yeah, well, it's it's. I think Jiminy is the. Uh, uh, is, J. <laughs> no, no, well, no, well, that could be it. Yeah, that could be it. But I think Sebastian Jiminy, Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, well, it could I be. Don't know. It could be. Uh, <laughs> That's what I thought. But I think Jiminy Cricket is. Uh, a full-on Disney thing. So I think he might be playing with the whole more of the actual tale than adapting a Disney story. Uh, yeah. But, dude, uh, I was trying to see who, like, which actors are uh, attached to this. I'm not sure if this is right, but, I mean, he's got, like, Ewan McGregor. Yeah. Uh, Tilda Swinton. David Bradley, if anybody knows David Bradley, I think he was he played that uh, one creepy old king in uh, the king of, uh, in the Game of Thrones uh, series, who like had the young daughters and everything was killing all the sons. Oh, that scumbag! Yeah, so <laughs> he played like, a good scumbag, and he's gonna be Geppetto of all people. So hopefully Geppetto is not a fucking scumbag and shit. <laughs> uh, evil Geppetto. Yeah, evil Geppetto. You got uh, Christoph Waltz. Um, yeah. Ron Perlman. Uh, oh, yeah. Tim Blake Nelson, uh, John Turturro, Finn Wolfhard. So I mean, it it, it sounds like a great cast. Uh, yeah. And especially, it's it's the mind. It's the mind of Del Toro. Uh, the guy, even on stuff that he's just executive produced, uh, it's awesome. You know, there there there's there's a lot of good shit that he's done. I think even the the stuff that's been. Uh, hated on like Crimson Peak. Uh, I oh, think, yeah. yeah, I think Crimson Peak is a great movie. I just think that Crimson Peak happened to be uh, uh, one of those things that people expected one thing and they received something else. So, yeah, it's just be ready to expect Guillermo del Toro, uh, something from Guillermo del Toro, not Pinocchio. You know, be ready to accept uh, his version of it, not. A Disney or uh, uh, a live action kind of Disney ad adaptation, how they usually been doing stuff. So, yeah, let me see. Uh, Lori's looking forward to Pinocchio for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Pinocchio is going to be great, man. Especially that's Guillermo del Toro. I'm glad that it's a, it's a. I think it's going to be a Netflix series. Uh, I don't know how many episodes. Even if it's a movie, uh, I, I would hope that it's a series. I'd, I'd like to see this look. A little bit more fleshed out uh and yeah uh stop motion animation it, it kind of reminds me of a little bit like Coraline, which is fucking creepy right so, I'm, I'm looking forward to that uh let me see she also says guillermo will give reverence to the material it deserves and there's a reason why he is my number eight favorite director yeah of course you know he's he, oh. he, he is he, he he's fucking dope uh Guillermo del Toro is really one of the true uh, visionaries of this time. I only wish that we had a chance to see what his Lord of the Rings would have looked like. Uh, I know Peter Jackson came back. It's just those two guys seem like they were separated at birth or something. The way uh, the way they think of, of, of things, so it, it would have been a uh, it would have been dope to see. Uh, that would be cool. Yeah, it it, it would have been man. Uh, let me see. We're gonna we're gonna have a pretty quick show today. You know, this is gonna probably be a super frank special. Frank, we're looking out for you, brother. Uh, so let's let, let's move on. Uh, let's go to. Uh, let me see. I already talked Guillermo del Toro. Uh, did you see? The, okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, Hellblazers. Fanny, oh wow! Yeah, I thought it was going to be Hellblazer, like a Hell right. TV series. Like I was like, oh damn, didn't they already do John Constantine too? Um, but the this is. An original horror movie coming from uh, coming from Tubi. 
Uh, this this looks to me this looks fucking badass, dude. Uh, it, it kind of looks like a Guillermo del Toro monster, which is fucking dope. Uh, this is uh written and directed by Justin Lee. He did another movie called Badland and Final Kill. Uh, but oh. dude, this this cast you got Tony Todd, yeah. You, know, you got the Candyman. You got Adrian oh. Barbeau, uh, yeah. who was from Swamp Thing, uh, The Fog, Escape from New York. Uh, yeah. You have Bruce Dern, he's, he's, he, Bruce Dern is just the biggest scumbag that's ever lived. At, it's, it's hard to see him in, in any other thing as the fucking evil racist dude from The Hateful Eight, for me personally. Oh, yeah. uh, you got John Kassir. People don't know John Kassir, but everybody knows who the Crypt Keeper is. He's the voice yeah. of the Crypt Keeper, uh -huh. so he's going to be in this. Meg Foster from They Live. Yeah. Uh, she was the beautiful lady with the very stone cold blue eyes uh uh and billy zane you know uh -huh. right? villain, you know like amazing villain from uh titanic not that i like titanic or ever seen it but he was a great villain in uh as a collector in uh tales from the crypt present demon knight which is yep. probably one of my fucking favorite uh just off off the hook fucking movies uh so yeah that's uh that so did you did you get a chance to check out the trailer yes i am so looking forward to this man wow that's amazing uh that that cast is is fantastic um you know billy zane was in a recently released limited series and i'm not gonna say what that is because it was a pleasant surprise when I happened to catch this limited series because I didn't know he was going to be in it. And he comes in and he is just awesome. It took me a minute to recognize that it was Billy Zane and to hear that he's getting work and he's like, you know, he's in that limited series that I just saw that I won't name. And because he's you don't want to, it's a surprise when he comes in out of nowhere or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's a surprise. I was like, Whoa, I didn't know. And, and he's great in it. So I'm not going to say what, um, what, what's, what streaming service is it on? Or is it on any streaming service? It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Okay. Just, just okay. if somebody's watching some of the, some of these series that way, if they really have like a hard on for Billy Zane or, you know, they want to see this guy, they'll probably watch every, uh, every series on Netflix just so they can get a taste. <laughs> Try to find it. What yeah, get a taste of the Zane, you know? We'll start that game. Um, yeah, Meg Foster. Oh, my God. That's 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 old school, man. You I know, love she Meg had Foster, those, man. The blue contacts. No, <laughs> those are live. contacts, man. Yeah, they are. I heard they were. No, no? those are contacts. Those are her steel. Those are her real eyes? Those are her real eyes, man. If you go watch the movie Leviathan, which I fucking adore, she she constantly tells people, oh, you guys are going to have to stay down there for a couple more weeks. And, you know, and you could just see that once they get topside and they see her, those steely blue eyes, man, they they they, wow. they, don't, lie. they don't lie. Those are her steely blues. Uh, wow, I didn't I didn't know that. I thought they were contact. No, not contact. Right. It's scary. It's scary. You know what? Yeah. She, you know, her eye those color, are the bluest eyes I've ever seen. You know, they remind me of. You remember the cable guy? Yeah. Jim Carrey? Yeah. The, the scene where Matthew Broderick's character is having the dream. And he, oh, yeah. And he sees fucking Jim Carrey's fucking like creeping up to the thing and he's just like, hey. And, and you see the blue <laughs> eyes. Dude, that always fucking, uh, that always gets me. So, yeah, dude. <laughs> it, it, I was like, it's Meg Foster. No, it's no, it's, it's, uh, it's Jim Carrey. But yeah, dude, uh, when I saw this, dude, this is. This is like a murderer's row of of horror icons. You know, it's like, let me get every horror person that I know, you know, good horror person, and let's throw them into a fucking movie. And it does look like a schlocky fucking movie. You know, Bruce Dern's coming out and you're saying, hey, last night I noticed some guys in fucking sheets and they were chanting some words. And next thing you know, there's a fucking demon going around killing people. I'm like, come on, man. That's fucking. That's that's just great. That that's so eighty schlock that it's it, it it you can't help yourself, man. I love Bruce Stern. He's 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 amazing, man. He was in a, a movie Nebraska. Yeah, that's I the think by uh, Alexander Payne. 
Yeah, that's that what, was a good movie. When you know how they um, give you your 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 little credits, like oh, he's from this. That's the first thing they put next to Bruce Dern's name, which is Nebraska. Like me, I always remember him from uh, Digstown. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was a. Uh, been in uh, all kinds of great he's in, movies. Yeah, he's in everything. Ramblin' Rose. Uh, shit. He was in Down Periscope. He's he, he's a great comedic actor too. He's a great yeah. he's a great villain. You know, it, he's the kind of villain that you want to foil. If you're like a, a good guy, you need to foil his evil plans. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I can't I can't wait for 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 Hellblazer, dude. Uh, Hellblazer's TV. And the one thing I love about this, it's on Tubi. Do you do you have yeah, yeah. Do you have Tubi? No, I don't. But I heard it's free, right? So yeah, two B's free. I know. I know Ray. Me and him disagree on this a lot. Sometimes I, I just look for stuff to watch, and I really don't mind that it has commercials. Shit, it's a free channel, and it has multiple things to watch. Uh, and yeah. you're getting it for free. Uh, it has a lot of good schlocky '80s and '90s fucking you know movies back in the day. Super fucking B movies and. And C and D movies, uh, they got a lot of uh, direct to video stuff. I think I, I was watching Puppet Master three on there one one. Yeah, nice. You know, yeah. So it, it, they do have like a lot of if you you need hidden gems, they got hidden gems galore. Uh, so I'm glad that Tubi is jumping in on the whole original TV series, the original movies, and I'm not sure if this is their first one. But God damn it, is this a great one? Because you're going horror. The only other thing they probably could have gave me would have been Robert England and uh, Bruce Campbell in it, which, yeah. you know, would have made it just mind-blowing. Uh, so let me see. Uh, Krista Carlson, the cast for Hell Ballsers. If it was Hell Ballsers, yeah, I'd be scared too. <laughs> um, oh, Hell Blazers. Uh, let me see. Uh, Meg Foster is evil. Was yes, there she. You're right, Lori. Meg Foster was evil in in the Masters of the Universe series. And it, oh wow! Movie. Yeah, you could see that she had those fucking eyes. They didn't. She doesn't Good need knowledge. Uh, yeah, Chris Cross, White Walker, white eyes. The White Walker eyes. Yeah, she does have White Walker eyes. <laughs> yeah, she's probably the original one. She's the queen. You know, and fucking Arya Stark is still hunting this bitch somewhere and gonna fucking jump at her out of nowhere and fucking just like stab her to death. Kind of like the little guy from Tropic Thunder, you know? <laughs> Call him you know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping for that this movie is a success. Um, and and these people go to comic conventions and stuff because I really want to meet Adrian Barbeau. I would really love to meet like <laughs> these, Tony Todd, you know? Although he, he's been around, you know, but... I think, he's a San Francisco, I think Tony Todd's a San Francisco guy. Uh, really? Not that he's from here, but I think he lives out here now, which is uh, oh, okay. Uh, I think I'm not too quite. I'm not entirely sure, but it'd be nice to. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. A lot of these guys, I would love to see them uh, go around the the con circuits. Uh, yeah. Adrian Barbeau, what would you get signed? Um, I have a Swamp Thing comic where um, it's the adaptation of the movie. Oh man, that's great! It's, it's it's got a super cover with her on it. Um, it's kind what of drawing? a blanket cover. Oh, like, uh, like the Swamp Thing is holding her. Like, like holding her, like like, like kind of like carrying her, kind of like um, you know, I'm, like just like a not a, like not a fireman carry, but like you know, like a like bride just holding her. Yeah, with like the bride. Yeah, you're carrying over like the a bride, bride, like carrying the bride across. You know, the threshold. Walking, yeah. Yeah, that'd be yeah. sick. That that would that totally be a sick uh, a sick thing to thing get to get signed. signed. Oh yeah. fuck yeah, man! Uh, yeah, because she she's very prevalent in that one. Me, if I could have anything signed by her, oh, it'd have to be something from Creep Show. And oh, yeah, I would just love her to just uh, sign it to me. Just call me Billy. Remember how she was always just saying that she was Hal Holbrook's wife, and, and she would introduce. She's all drunk as shit. Ah, just call me Billy. Oh, oh, God. that'd be awesome. Yeah, if I could get her just to sign. Just call me Billy, Adrian Barbo. Oh, that'd be, that'd be great, dude. I I would fucking lose my shit. Especially, yeah, it's it's probably my favorite story out of Creep Show. You remember Creep Show? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I think that. Thanks I think. 
oh god that was one of the fucking best uh anthologies ever god dang oh yeah got this shine going it's a little let me see this this fucking light is killing me oh there we go that oh that's so much better that's so much better all right so let's moving on moving on let me Uh, see but i'm so looking forward to that movie though it's Man, that's an uh, old school horror cast. Yeah, it's on it's on free TV. I, I don't know. Does your TV uh, allow you to download uh, apps to to it? Is it like one of the newer smart TVs? Uh, no, I don't. I don't have. Or you got like a or you got like a Roku box or an Amazon uh, Fire Stick, perhaps? No, I need to upgrade, man. <laughs> no, I'm, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this: if you get a Fire Stick, you could just put all your streaming services on that one thing, and it's probably. It's probably worth it, man. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I highly recommend it, dude, uh, getting a Fire Stick because you get Tubi. There's also Pluto. Uh, it's another free service, but Pluto, for some reason to me, they throw so many more commercials out there. It may be because they have a lot more content, uh, but Tubi, definitely, they give you maybe about 90 seconds to two minutes of commercials, and they fucking throw you right back into the movie. And the good thing is, they rewind it at least 10 seconds uh so you jump right back in a little bit backwards and then you get to go back in like fresh so just imagine if you went to the bathroom uh doc ock is you know falling with peter parker and then they cut to commercial you run to the bathroom and you come back commercials over it restarts the fight right as they're falling again which is oh okay yeah so that would be that would be kind of cool uh to check out so you know just I'll rem- look into that yeah, yeah dude it it, it 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 it's cool you know and just remember guys you know while you're downloading all this stuff too hit the like button all right yeah. hit the like button there's a scientist out there uh, just like that kid you know getting bitten by the spider if you hit this this fucking like button there's going to be a scientist who gets irradiated by gamma rays and he's going to save us one day so please, just like the Hulk says, smash that like button, all right? Smash the like button. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. Tell tell they your like mom. It. Tell your dad. We're probably their age. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs> right? Or oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, grandparents. But yeah, Don't you know, bring chicken. Yeah, let's let, let's let's get those scientists irradiated. Let's get those children bitten by spiders. Hit that like button. You'll change the course of history. So moving on from talking shit like I usually do. Let me see. Damn, we're moving fast, man. Uh, we're, pretty good. This is going to be like a, a good hour and 15 minute show, which, you know, I think we we just wanted to get this show out there. Uh, we do care about the people. We're men's of the people here. So uh, let's talk next about. Oh, man, this is I'm going to fucking go crazy on this one. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. And not in a good way. Not in a good way. So Apple TV is coming out with the Godzilla TV series based on the MonsterVerse yeah. that Legendary Pictures have been doing. So before I kind of just go nuts a little on it, uh, what are your thoughts, Alex? Um, I, I, I'm I looking forward to it. I, The idea of a Godzilla show, I mean, oh man, ever since I was a kid, you know, going back to the 70s, man, like, You know, Godzilla has been, you know, just one of those, one of those creatures that you just, you just want to see it. And now, like, to finally get a, a TV show, oh my God, I, I mean, again, with the caveat that it's good, it's, it's well done, it has good action, good, you know, monster fighting, kaiju destruction you know um and if it's done well then i'm i'm all you know i'll be watching it every week you know or or whenever it comes on and uh you know i think we've been waiting for this pretty much our whole lives (laughs) i know i have i i I, (laughs) I love godzilla man yeah i agree with you man i i love godzilla uh the one thing that gets me about it is they've tried to do this with animation on Netflix. It's pretty bad uh, because it takes forever to get Godzilla parts. And if you're going to do an actual TV series on it, 
who are we following? Are we following Godzilla? Uh, you know, just going up, tearing shit up? Because I have a feeling it's going to be like the first two episodes, we don't even see Godzilla. Third episode, uh, they start talking to us about him that, oh, look, he's on the radar. Fourth episode, we see a, a glimpse. Fifth episode is this. If it's like an eight episode season, we're going to see maybe about Godzilla, maybe for 35 minutes out of the whole series, mm. which is something I don't want to see. I don't yeah. see them concentrate on nothing but the human. Oh, my love for you is great, but I must go fight Godzilla. Uh, oh, don't do that. Don't please. I. The only thing is, I think that uh, I've heard that. Let me see. I think I read that Matt Fraction is going to be involved in this. Uh, so this is, let me see. This is from Apple TV. Uh, this is from Apple. This is off of their new site. So Apple TV Plus today announced a series order for a new original live action series from Legendary's MonsterVerse franchise. Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking new reality that monsters are real, the series explores one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and the legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. And that's what I'm afraid of. So it's going to be about this family. Uh, the, un right. the Untitled Monsterverse series will be produced by Legendary Television and ex executive produced by co-creators Chris Black of Star Trek Enterprise and Outcast, who will also serve as showrunner and Matt Fraction from Hawkeye, alongside Safe House Pictures, Joby Herald, and Tori Tunnel, and Toho uh, Company Limited. Hiro Matsuoka, uh, Hiro Matsuoka and Takamasa Arida will executive produce for Toho. Toho is the owner of the Godzilla characters and has licensed the la rights to Legendary for this series as a natural byproduct of their long-term friendship, uh, long-term relationship on the film franchise. So there it is. Uh, that's what scares me. It's yeah, yeah, no. It's the fact that they're going to concentrate on a family that Godzilla has probably like pissed off and uh, or he's hurt in some way, and now they're going to probably they want to figure out what's going on and why Godzilla. So is the is the, is it going to be just set in the universe? Because it's kind of fucked up to call it Godzilla. I mean, I would rather have it called like. Uh, the Titans legacy or some shit, you know, from the Mo tales from the monster verse or, or whatever. And just at the end of the fucking, the credits, you hear Godzilla's trademark, you know, yell, or, you know, just his scream, uh, the battle cry, you know, but I, I have a feeling we're not going to see a lot of Godzilla in this. And to, uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. To call it God. Disappointing if you're right. I, and I don't. Want, I, I hope you're wrong on this one. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I really do. But it's just when it comes to TV writing, uh, to have an actual TV series based on Godzilla, and I, I, shit, you give me fucking eight hours of monster kaiju's beating the shit out of each other. You got my. You got my attention. Yeah. I, I, I will tune in. It'll be like a wrestling match every fucking week for me. You know who who who's he fighting next? Uh, Godzilla versus Kenny Omega. You know. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, I'd, I'd tune in to watch that shit. Uh, Godzilla versus Godzilla versus the Hulk. Oh, with the what's Hulk. That, doing? What's that dinosaur wrestler uh, with Jungle Boy? Luchasaurus. Godzilla versus <laughs> Luchasaurus Luch versus Godzilla. <laughs> I would love to see Luchasaurus versus Godzilla. Fucking Godzilla <laughs> just fucking stamps on him and shit. God, Luchasaurus, <sighs> and then Godzilla just beats his ass. It'd be great. It'd be great. I mean, we, we can dream, right? We can dream. You can have Jungle Boy riding Godzilla. Fighting against Luchasaurus? He, <laughs> hey, that's a heel turn. In the business, we call that a heel turn. <laughs> no no breaking kayfabe. Wow. No breaking kayfabe. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, dude. I mean, I, I, that's the one fear I have of this show. It's uh, the fact that we're not going to get too much of Godzilla. That we're going to get so much of this family and... It's gonna be. It's kind of gonna be a bummer to not to not get it all. Uh, if they were smart. Opening scene, destruction. Godzilla fighting some monster. Oh, dude! Opening scene with that. Opening scene, and then after that, then you kind of like. I want. Yeah. I want to see him stepping, boom, and I want to hear. Uh, 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 uh. I want to hear that shit. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It, this is his fucking W AEW entrance. Uh, 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 uh. 
<laughs> yeah, he's fucking shit up, man. Uh, I would, I would, I would love to see uh, Godzilla like that. Uh, going yeah. to chats. Uh, let me see. Lori says, "I have an Amazon Fire Stick. I love it. Tons of streaming apps available. Very true. There's tons of streaming apps. Alex, you can dump your Netflix on there. Uh, Amazon Prime. It's all at the hand of a, all of a touch of a little remote. Very easy to navigate. Uh, B movies." Horror movies, noir movies, Alex. And the good thing is, dude, if uh, if you get yourself a Fire Stick, you know these apps, they're able to be shared. You know, you might have to be canceled. <laughs> you might, you could cancel your Netflix. I don't know if you're borrowing somebody else's Netflix. I don't care. I'm a pirate. He's my family, so you know we're both Nicaraguan and we're related somehow. So he's part of my family. <laughs> the Nicaraguan share a Netflix account program. Exactly. Yeah, I do it with half of my <laughs> Half a minute now. Um, I um, I'm gonna look into that now since you know I'm I'm kind of like, yeah, I I it's, definitely. It's a good. It's yeah. a good thing to to. I I actually, I was a big uh, proponent for John McCain's uh, cable a la carte bill a long time ago before he passed away. He was trying to push it so you can go to a cable company, select your channels, and those are what you. That's what you want to pay for. Which I thought would oh, have, yeah. that would have been an awesome idea, but I think this is better. The fact that you can just take all your streaming services and just put them onto one thing, and that's your cable service. Your Fire Stick would probably be your cable service. It's a one-time purchase. Uh, so, like, if you have Amazon Prime, if you have uh, Netflix, if you have Tubi, you have Pluto, you have Disney Plus. I mean, do you really need cable anymore? Cables become obsolete at this point. So yes, right. stay, save save the drama from your three hundred dollar fucking cable bill. Get your streaming, get your internet service, and just get a Fire Stick or something else. Because I, I don't think we're being held hostage anymore by cable companies or direct TV satellite companies. The stream wars have begun, and cable's gonna lose. So yeah, stream the stream wars are here, baby. You know, we're just going to be getting more services. They're going to be services dropping out, but we're going to be getting a lot more services. Uh, let me see. We got also Lori again. Unfortunately, that Godzilla sounds more like it's for a new generation that has no clue about the legacy of the monster. Uh, I, I would say yes and no. I think a lot of the things for this particular Godzilla is going to be based on the MonsterVerse. Uh, I actually do enjoy the MonsterVerse as its own thing and not... Uh, not kind of related to the Toho stuff. Uh, I actually appreciate this Godzilla more than Deanzilla. Uh, the, what was it, 1998 uh, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin one. Uh, wasn't a big fan of it. If they could have just called it something else other than Godzilla, it probably would have been a great movie. Uh, but, you know, us as fans, we expect Godzilla. You know, we just, right. can't have, we just can't have a giant iguanodon running around and then sounding like Godzilla, you know. If it if it looks like a duck and barks like Godzilla, it's still a duck, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, let me Godzilla. see. Uh, Megazord versus Godzilla. That's actually happening. I think in the comic books. Uh, this is from Danny. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, Danny, if uh, if you're, I, I know you're you're a Power Rangers guy. So yeah, go check that out. Go to your local comic shop. Uh, hit up, you know, go go to Frank. Go to uh, go to some of these comic shops in the in the city. Uh, you know, Amazing Fantasy, it's one of the better comic shops. Uh, you know, we like to, to frequent it. Also, uh, Comic Experience, Comics uh, comics and Cards Central. I'm not sure if they're ever going to open up again uh, because of the pandemic. Asian comic. Asian comics and Art uh, It's another great place. But, yeah, it's it's a definite, it's definitely go uh, go check it out, man. Uh, it's a it's a good spot to to check out all of these uh, these stories that, you know, we, we talk about all the time. Uh, we we definitely want to see more. I like. I definitely want to see more crossovers. I'd like to see you know Godzilla. Me, I'd love to see Godzilla fight Voltron. But go, oh, that'd be cool. Or 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 have a Robotech fleet go against fucking Godzilla. I think Godzilla would fuck them up. You know, because it's hard to take that fucker down. Um, hmm. but yeah, it's a it, it's a cool. It's a cool concept for a show. I'm just not sure how it's going to be received or how it's going to be done. The other yeah. thing that scares me is this is something I don't know if I'm going to get to watch. Unfortunately, Apple TV is not one of the services I subscribe to. They haven't given me they haven't really given me a reason uh, other than the show Ted Lasso. I mean, everyone talks about that. I haven't seen it either. 
but it's not a game. It's not a like Game of Thrones level where everybody's like, you gotta watch this, or Stranger Things. Like you got Cobra Kai, you gotta watch this. Netflix has things on there that I constantly want to watch, so that's why I have Netflix. Amazon Prime does the same thing. HBO Max is doing it now. I so, thought Ted Lasso was kind of getting that kind of. Everybody I know that has seen it is like, oh my god, Ted Lasso, Ted Lasso. I, Ted, I yeah, it's Ted Lasso, but it's just, I, I don't think it. To me, it jumps up to the level of something like I remember when when we were talking about Lovecraft Country and The Watchmen, and oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. You see how it makes you react? Oh God, those those fucking shows. Watchmen was great, man. Watchmen was fucking awesome. So, yeah, so good. I, I don't know if Ted Lasso has that. I mean, it's a comedy, so it's a different kind of a, a it's a different kind of a show. But I just don't know if it has that. Apple TV has anything to just reach out and fucking grab you, take a hold of you, like you're staying with me. This is this is the service for you. So hopefully this could be it. Uh, I, I I would hope that they do what you said, just fucking give you Godzilla in the fucking first fifteen minutes, just fucking shit up, and. Yeah. And, and work work other things in for the show from that, uh, but yeah, it's just I would I would hope that they're doing that they're gonna they listen to the fans. Don't don't just give uh don't just do fan service uh, somewhere and yeah, uh, so yeah. Before we move on to the main topic, as you guys can see back there, there's a lot of night wings. And that's going to be the next topic, especially with me here, Max Effort Grant. Mm -hmm. This is going to be pretty fucking fun to talk about. But before you do that, guys, you got to make sure you hit that like button again, because there's a southern source. There is a southern supreme out there drinking bottles of red wine, but it's actually rum. So let's get this man drunk, please. The Southern Supreme needs more uh, Maker's Mark or whatever the hell he was drinking. He was drinking the. Uh, UB40 red red wine, but it was actually rum. Thank I, I forgot his buddy's name, but god damn you, thank you for that story. That 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 <laughs> Sergio. Sergio shout out to Sergio. Sergio. Shout his out neighbor. To that, oh, man. <laughs> that that was probably one of the best stories I've ever heard uh that was ever said. And comedy he, gold. He confirmed it. That was great. So yeah, please, once again, hit that like button right now. Because a Southerner Supreme needs some red wine, but it's actually rum in there. So let's get him drunk. So finally, for the big, big topic today, I did want to go something comic book. I'm usually a guy who talks more movies and TV and cartoons and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling. I bring up a lot mm. of wrestling here. Horror so movies. And horror movies, horror movies, horror movies and wrestling. If I can have fucking Kevin Nash come out and beat the shit out of people in a horror movie, not like Kane and See No Evil because that was trash, but if I can have like some actually savage ass wrestlers, yeah, yeah, I mean, I hate Ryback as a wrestler, but let him go out there and just fucking break somebody's back over and over again. Uh, you, you got my money. I'm, I'm a happy camper. Uh, so before we go into that, before or after that, so now let's go into the meaty, meaty one. All right. Now, I don't know about you, man. So, it's hard for me to talk about this one. So, DC is teasing an identity for Nightwing, a new identity for Nightwing, and it's part of the future state, uh, this future state storyline that they're doing. Uh, yeah, which is going to introduce a new Joker. Uh, I guess this is coming off of the the three Joker storyline, and now they're going to introduce one more, another fucking Joker out of nowhere. I I, I don't fucking get it. Uh, but before you get my thoughts, tell people a little bit about the changes that, I mean, I know, I know a lot of them. He's went from, Robin, he, he's went from Robin to Nightwing. Uh, right. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, I mean, Dick Grace, Dick Grayson, his, his evolution from being Robin to where he currently is, is probably one of the fucking most up and down characters that come to mind when it other than Wally West and I, I ad nauseum me and Ray go crazy when it comes to how Wally West has been treated in the uh, in the DC universe as of late but it looks like they're correcting the shit uh and I'm, I'm glad to hear that according to Ray he's, he's you know he's telling me to read uh these storylines uh once he gets the trades I'm gonna read them 
And if I like them, I'll buy them. I, I that's what usually goes for, with me. If I really like a trade, right. I'll be buying it. But uh, lately, in the last oh. last three years with with Dick Grayson, I haven't been happy. I, I've tuned out in those last three years. But so you know, fill us in on, on what's been happening, Alex. So, um, well, right now there is a Nightwing series by Tom Taylor, who uh, he he write he's a he's a really good writer, man. He he wrote uh, uh, Deceased, all the Deceased books. Oh, yeah. Wrote, I, love books. I love those books. Uh, he wrote, uh, uh, um, what is it? Uh, it's the vi- Injustice. Oh. I, I think on the video game. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, that was his storyline, huh? Yeah. Um, and and so he's... Uh, he, okay, he's written I... A, I got I got it right here. I got a lot of his books. He's he's wrote Deceased. He's wrote Injustice. He's yeah. uh, Batman the Detective. He's uh he's written for Wolverine. Uh, he's written yeah. for Hellblazer. He did Rise and Fall. Um, he he's oh, he, he did, did Lady Wolverine. Uh, oh, he did do Lady. Wo- yes. Yeah, yeah, it was the all new Wolverine. Yeah. All new Wolverine. Yeah, he yeah. did uh, Superman, Son of Kal El. Uh, I think he did that's the storyline where uh where Cal. Uh, where Jonathan Kent came out or uh, announced as bisexual, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which uh, he also did the Deep, and I, I can't remember who who the Deep is. I, I think I'm confusing them with the with the Outsiders, because um, there is a book called The Deep Something in Outsiders. He but he's done Deadpool, he's done Star Wars, Death, uh, Darth Maul. He's he's done a lot of good. He's done a lot of Star Wars, a lot of Nightwing, a lot of DC, a lot of Marvel. So he, he's all over the place, which is good. Uh, oh yeah, he's right around my age. He's forty three years old, so he does have a good, you know, knowledge of the business, knowledge of everything. And on. His Nightwing has been pretty good, man. Um, there, there was a recent, a recent issue that just came out, um, like last month, where it's one continuous like shot, like, you know, like a side scroller game. Oh, like a like kind of like a contra, like a run and shoot. I mean, it's kind. Of, it's like the the story is told like as you flip each page, it's just the side screen. the the uh, The image is just like if you were playing a side a side scrolling game. You oh. know how like the story is told just like that. Like you can lay out the story page to page, and it would be one long running left to right kind of story. Oh, you know that's interesting. And, and and uh yeah that issue came out it's pretty creative um i'm sure it's been done before but uh that that one came out um and uh and yeah it's been it's been pretty good it's been pretty good story it's um a lot of people are comparing it to matt fractions hawkeye you know where uh that was kind of a, a different kind of take on on hawkeye and um this is kind of a, a different take on um, a Nightwing, um, but you know I haven't I haven't caught up with it recently. I just know I did read that one issue though, um, and uh, yeah. Besides that, um, well, Nightwing. I mean, like his history was he was the original Robin, then he became Nightwing, then he went to Bloodhaven. He left Gotham and went to Bloodhaven and That's fought crime there, became a cop. Right, he was a yep. cop for a while. For a little while, he donned the cowl when Batman was. Uh, he he replaced Batman for a while. Finally, um, he, you know he did that, and uh, oh, and then there was I I never read this, but when he became Rick Grayson, oh, he, yeah, he, was a, he had amnesia. He was a cab driver that had amnesia. Or something that occasional amnesia. I I don't know what that story is. I yeah, never read those. That was the one but, where I was already tuning out. I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" <laughs> but um, yeah, the, Nightwing is an awesome character. He's like, you know, he's just just different from Batman. Totally different, and okay. and that's the cool thing about it is he's not a Batman clone. You know, he's not as serious as Batman. He's good. Um, he's as good. He's well, not as good, but you know he's there with them. But he's just like physic, physically gifted as 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 uh not as great of a detective, but he's a great. He's just as talented as a fighter. 
than uh than Batman. Not see, yeah, it's hard to be as talented, but you know he's close because but Batman will whip his ass. That's why. I mean, yeah, he's just an awesome character, and um, apparently there's going to be some big change coming to him now. Yeah. Some members of the Justice League are going to be killed. Yes, we talked about that last week that the Justice League is going to be killed off. And this could be a marking that he's probably going to take another character and could he I I, I talked to Ray, maybe they cuz I know that Batman when the Justice League went missing in some of those just, you know, early uh Justice League, I think I have it and I read I remember reading it in the JLA books that uh that Batman left instructions to Dick for Dick to take over the Justice League. And, oh, okay. Yeah, that he was going to be making sure that to to run it to to re you know to uh what uh re uh re to start recruiting uh, a new Justice League because Batman Superman they they I think they all end up going to another world. I think they got taken away by Manitou, if I remember right. I think Manitou had something to do with it. They, they he disappeared most of the Justice League somewhere else. And Batman, you know, left instructions for Dick. But the one thing that I didn't like is that there was a point where I did like the part when he became a Talon in uh, the Court of Owls that, you know, there was more to the backstory of uh, oh, the, that's Grayson, right. yeah. the Grayson family, which I fucking totally fucking dug. They're, they're just, it, I love when it's more world building like that. They take in, they take into the history account of the character and they still build a story around that shit. That's the shit I get excited for. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. So you're using the current infrastructure of what you have, and you're just adding to it. You're not taking away. You're just adding. Uh, he was we, also a James Bond type of character, Grayson, the super spy. Yeah, yeah. I never read those either, though. Um, did, you, did you read his? Did you read his run as he, when he was like renegade? Um, no. He kind of wore, no. like, he kinda wore like a reddish, uh, like you can see right underneath your uh, your face. You can see him with the red. That's when he kind of you, he donned more of the red, and he I think he was training uh, Ravager, uh, uh, Deathstroke's daughter. Like he said, it was okay, but oh, he, nice. he turned her against him finally, and yeah, it was just one of those things that I just think they fuck with the character way too much. Um, right, I think they fuck with a lot of their main characters way too much. Uh, yeah. If if they want to change characters, I get that. You want to introduce new tropes. You want to introduce new things. But how about you leave the character alone? Not make him a murderer. Not give him amnesia. You know, not 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 uh not try to placate to any special interest group. Not cut off his toes. Not fucking cut off his arm. Not not make him a paraplegic. Not j can, can we just do something else? I mean, like where you introduce a new character that that happens to, and like Dick has to help figure out a way to help him. It, it, it's just like Dick goes through Dick goes through it all. Uh, so so does so does a guy like fucking Wally West. They they fucking murder turned him into a murderer. They fucking had him, like they took away his family. They took away his. So they put him through the ringer. They, like they, Daredevil. They keep <laughs> no Daredevil, but at least with Daredevil, uh, everything is done to Daredevil in a way where it 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 brings more to his character. It with with Nightwing, I feel they do more to change it. Like they're they're changing for the sake of change, not for the sake of growth. Daredevil, they change certain things about him for growth, and like Daredevil, he goes through the fucking ringer. He comes out better. Nightwing goes through the ringer as of late, and it feels like he just goes back to being Nightwing. Hey, I know what I am. Hey, I'm Nightwing. Da da da. Hey, should be doobie socket to me, kind of shit, you know. And I I just don't understand when it comes to why they would fuck. Nightwing, but they like to give like credence to uh, like I don't know. I'm trying to figure out like who gets like Hal Jordan. They fucking love Hal Jordan. You know, I, I don't get it. I, I really don't get it. You know, so are, are, would you, are you going to pick up any of these storylines or, or not? Uh, or, you know, I, I mean, I'm, um, I want to read them, but I'm not going to collect them until I know what's going on. So, so the thing is, like, um, I, I've, I've been spending way too much money on on comic books, you know, like more than I have. I mean, I love comic books. Don't don't get me wrong, but I, I noticed that I'm buying the floppies, I'm buying the single issues, 
And then I end up buying the trade too. So yeah. now yeah. I'm just I'm just waiting now to 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 get the trades because you know then by then you hear the you you hear the reviews, you hear what what people are saying about a book, and then I can decide whether I want to get the trade or not. You know, I don't, I don't really need to have the single issues. Because you I mean, can... occasional. I mean, I I do buy single issues still, um, and I actually picked up some today, which I'll show in a bit. But um, you know, I, I'm I'm just a, what, what's called a trade waiter now. You know, I'm I'm trying to uh, Guilty. stop. You know, I I was buying. I bought so many Batman books over the years, and then I just kind of like starting this year. I was kind of like, you know what? I need to stop buying all these floppies um, just because it's not my thing. It, you know, I'd, I'd rather wait for a trade and you know, and and just do that. Just read the read it all one story, you know, or one story arc in a yeah. trade instead of buying because the individual issues are. I mean, sometimes they're cool to get, you know, they have really cool covers and things like that, you know, in moderation is, is what I'm saying, you know. I, I think I agree with you to the to the point where I I would collect singles, but the thing that would get me is just the covers, like the Enter, Enter the Dragon cover for 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 Grayson. Uh, get the, oh, yeah. The Teen Titans one with the Lost Boys, like when they did all those eight. Yeah. 80s movie covers. That's like the only reason I would get it because I would love to put that into a cover somewhere and display it on the wall. It's art. Yeah. It, it, it definitely is beautiful art. It's uh with with certain covers. Like I still I think it's what Infinity Gauntlet number four. Oh yeah. Is that the one where Come and get me? The Come and Get Me. Yeah. It, it's never like the day I saw that, I it's it's ingrained in here, dude. Like uh, Thanos has been ingrained in my mind based on that one cover, and that's why I think it's it's great <laughs> to have those single issues, dude. It right. look like this Thanos ingrained it so much in me. I remember this is how much of a nerd I am. So seventh grade, I'm in part. I'm part of science club. All right, I'm part of science club. My teacher says we're gonna create something called Splash for Cash, where you're gonna put your face in like a board, and you're gonna uh. Uh, we're going to throw balloons and there's going to be, you know, all these spikes. So the balloon breaks and, you know, what's whoever, whoever's there. Right. Uh, when it came to drawing the board, we selected Thanos, the come and get me. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we drew out all of Thanos. So like, I'm not sure if the, spl the, the splash for cash board is still there at, at, at James Denman middle school. Shout out to James Denman middle school. Uh, James sure Denman. Yeah, there we go. Dem Denman Demons. Demons. Best, best mascot. Best. Fucking change yes. it, guys. Don't change it. The Denman Demons. Best mascot ever. Demons. I don't fuck about best mascot. Bullshit. You know, I'm Catholic. I don't give a shit about your sacrilegious bullshit. Best mascot in San Francisco, bar none. The Denman Demon. Uh, yep. But yeah, we did Thanos, and it was all based on that one cover of Come and Get Me. So I totally get your, your, your like, a cover obsession. Uh, there are still covers that ring uh, in, in my head. Some of Joe Mad, uh, Mad Joe Mad's covers. I keep, I keep butchering his last name. Joe Madureira, his covers for uh, for those uh, of Age of Apocalypse. I think he did Astonishing X Men. Yeah, are some of the greatest covers that I personally I fucking love. Dale Keown's covers for uh, oh. for Pit. Well, I like I, I used to love his pit oh. because it was something original, and his Hulk, his Hulk is fucking fantastic. Uh, John Romita's covers, uh, Todd McFarlane's covers, you know, uh, Jim Lee, fucking Jim Lee's X Men, multiple X Men number ones that fucking created a a whole, you know, the whole fucking Time scroll. <laughs> yeah, exactly those things. That's that's what's beautiful about uh, those single issues. So I totally get you about. Uh, you know, collecting the tr the trades. I'm on board with you with the trades. I, I at least with the trade, I can go to the store, look at it, go through a go through a few pages, go to the end. I'm like, okay, I like the art. I like where the story looks like it's going. Let me go in there and pick up this book. That's how I I picked up a what was it? Witches, 
I can't remember who fucking did Witches. It wasn't Remender. Uh, Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder. Thank you very much. And uh, I think... And Jock. He, and Gideon Falls. I think... Was that Tom King? Shit. No. Gideon Falls is... Uh, wow. I, I can't... I mean, uh, I'm going um, to one up because that's going to kill me. I think... is that uh, That's not Brubaker. Gideon Falls. Is that Remender? No. Uh, uh, Andrea Sorrentino, color, blah, 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 blah. Jeff Lemire. Yeah, Jeff Lemire. Jeff Lemire. So, of uh, course, yeah. man. Yeah, he's he's, he's a great writer, he's man. Amazing. I'm he's digging, amazing. I'm digging that guy. So Jeff Lemire is the man. So I'm hoping that with this new tease of a new identity, I just hope they don't take him too far from Dick Grayson. I just hope they don't take him too far from Nightwing. Uh, I don't want to see yeah. the character change too much like they've done in the past. Uh, it's just, it's, it, it feels like they just fuck them too much. And uh, I'm kind of over the whole, yeah, you know, like you can see right there, like the evolution, you can see the three Robins in the in our backdrop right here. You can see, you know, you got uh, old school Robin and then you got, uh, you know, the, the fish scale tight Robin. Then further on down, you got the, like the kind of Tim Drake, uh, you know, uh, Robin costume. Then he goes into his uh, <laughs> his fake dead man suit, which I I kind of love. The, collar. the fucking collar, man. It just reminds me of Dead Man so much. I, yeah. I, I wish I, I wish I'm not sure if there is an issue where Dead Man's like, hey, you stole my fucking suit or something. Uh, but then you get into the long haired Grayson, uh, into his iterations, the ponytail Grayson, and then like his new iterations is he, just the one of the best evolutions of those characters you know like wally west too he went from you know kid flash to becoming the flash uh i'm not sure if we've ever seen other characters really ascend to to become the main characters just yet uh like cal rayner has never really been the one solid green lantern Every, everybody's always like hung on hal jordan or, or john stewart afterwards uh, the, the 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 one lone Kryptonian is fucking Superman. Uh, right? Have they, have they ever come out with another Aquaman? You know, I'm I'm think Mira's probably been the closest thing to to it. I know there's Tempest and there's Aqualad, but I don't think that they they ever closely closely measure up. I think Cassandra Sandsmark or Donna Troy might be the closest thing to Wonder Woman. Yeah, um, but they never really, you know. Well, now they have Nubia, and they have. Uh... Uh, what's her name? The Brazilian uh, Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman now? The Brazilian one? I forgot. I think her name is something like Yara Flor or something like that. Oh, um, let me, I, I, dude, I, I am so out of the loop. I need to, let me see. Wonder, there, oh, no, no. Brazilian Wandering Spider? No, Brazilian Wonder Woman. That's what I want to see. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Brazilian yeah. wandering spider. Hey, Brazilian that wandering. would be a good character. Uh, Yara Flor. Yeah. 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 She she looks pretty dope. I mean, I love that you know they give her the darker skin tones and uh, yeah, she, she looks she, like she got some Madonna mole too. Uh, yeah. I I, I I dig that. I dig that art. That art looks yeah, pretty, looks pretty strong. Pretty cool, man. How they develop the character though? I don't know. Yeah, I haven't really. You know, I don't. There's just too much. I'm not reading all these things. I'm like, <laughs> like you know, I, I'm just aware of the characters, and they seem to be interesting. They seem to be uh, doing pretty well. Um, Nubia has also been getting some run. She's a uh, she's black Wonder Woman, basically. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and uh, I wouldn't mind having her first appearance. That'd be pretty cool. Nubia. Um, yeah, Nubia. She's oh, she's she been around since the seventies. Dope, dude. They yeah. got this one fucking picture of her with like a fucking sword. Looks like she's about to stab, or is it a sword or like a spike? She's about to stab somebody. That looks pretty dope. I she love that name too, Nubia. Nubia. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. That's pretty dope. You know what's sad? Um, have you seen the Have you seen the Teen Titans uh, TV series? No, I keep hearing it's good. But you, have you seen what they look? They 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 have Starfire looking like. Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen the, that. Yeah. What's sad is that the lady who's playing Starfire looks like she could be the perfect version of Nubia. Oh, see, they always do that. Like, um, cask. Yeah, cask I always felt Jason Momoa would have made a great Lobo. 
Jason Momoa would have probably been a, made a great Lobo. Jason Momoa, I think, has a ton of characters that he could have played. It's just too bro. He's his Aquaman is way too broy for me. Like it was so bro. Like I don't want to see that. I want my Aquaman. <laughs> to be, I want my Aquaman to be regal. Like he right. he knows he's a king, but they fuck with him and you know because he's Aquaman. You talk you talk to fish. You talk to fish, Aquaman. I don't talk to fish. I communicate with with fish. They fucking assholes. But yeah, I, I have a feeling they're gonna uh, they're gonna they're gonna fuck with uh, Dick again, and yeah, it, it, it don't. It doesn't sit well with me. It, it doesn't sit Don't well. Don't tease the dick. Don't yeah, definitely do not tease the dick. It's uh yeah, you, you tease dick, you're teasing me. It's bad. It's bad for us. All right, so before we go off uh into the final uh part of the show, which where we do the pull list and hidden gems, remember guys, you gotta hit that subscribe button. You gotta hit that like button, all right? Because when you hit that like button. There's a fucking crazy assassin out there who's going to get some fucking awesome swords and he's going to go ham on everybody. And they're going to play the Deadpool rap behind that shit. And he's going to fuck us all up. Well, not me, because we're actually good people here at the SF Comic Book Company. But he's going to fuck a lot of people up out there. right? Just make sure you hit like, because then we can t see what a full psychotic can do. right? Just hit that like button. Please. Yeah. Right. please. We, we, want, we want children eaten. Or not eaten by spiders. Children bitten by spiders. We want scientists irradiated. We want the Southerner Supreme to get his red, 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 red wine to, to actually turn into rum inside his bottle and get drunk. And get these assassins, you know, murking people out there and talking shit while the Deadpool rap plays. Let's get those, let's get those likes, folks. Let's get those likes. So now. We're going to be moving on to, you know, one of the favorite parts of the show, the pull list. Eh, look, it's, uh, you know, this is kind of, this reminds me of Squid Game. You know, the, the people on the right side, they're doing the, exactly what they're supposed to do. The people on the left should lose. Uh, even though you have really strong ass people on the left side there. <laughs> you got Cap, you got She-Hulk. Well, who is that? Hercules and Thor? Yeah. That, that's not fair. Kind of not fair. That's not fair, dude. That's not fair. I, I, I'm, I'd want to be on their team and shit, you know? Like, yeah. I, I want to be one. Yeah. So, uh, Alex, uh, let's start with you, man. What do you got What do you got for us today? Um, a couple things. Um, so, you know, usually Ray would say, like, something good or something bad. So, yeah, he, um, always, and, he always wants to see something good or bad, you know? Something good or bad, so... I, I'm gonna start with something bad. Something um, bad. Yes. For for a first time in in ever, I I, I usually have something good. You're optimistic. But, um, oh, this it's it's fucking like a it's a milestone here. So so the world famous Castro Theater oh, here in here that. in San Francisco uh, has an old fashioned organ. Would play silent movies. Would play. Classic films, Academy Award films, foreign films, musical horror films, just musicals. They would have sing-alongs. Well, they're going dark for the rest of the year as they're being remodeled, and and they are going to be a live music venue. Now, I love live music. I love live music venues, but not at the expense of having a classic movie house. Now, my understanding is they are still going to show movies, but I'm very worried about what this means for those movies that were played there. If it becomes mostly a music venue, then I am very, very disappointed and very saddened to hear that. And many, many people on social media have expressed my similar sentiments. I agree and with you. So, so I, I hope that they keep at least to some level those classic films, that they keep the organ and they have the organ player, you know, the pipes. Uh, uh, that was just, it, it's just a iconic. beautiful, iconic place to go see a movie and I'm really sad to hear that I won't get to see any movies, at least for this year. Um, 
And I hope that when they come out of it, it doesn't become strictly a music venue because that's, that's sad. And I'm, you know, uh, that, that's my bad news. I, so, I wonder what, the, I wonder what the neighborhood thinks about that. Cause I mean, even the bringing, neighborhood does not like it. Yeah. Cause you're bringing in music. I mean, I get it. You're bringing in revenue, but it's not revenue that you might want in that particular neighborhood. It's like, the one thing I don't want to see is fucking violence being brought to that neighborhood with the wrong fucking crowd showing up, which right. might happen for whatever show it might 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 happen there. If it's a if it's a fucking rock show, or if it's a a, a country show, or or some kind of poppy fucking show, or, or hip hop show, or whatever show that happens to with, with every the one thing about music shows is that there's always fucking idiots that go to these shows. There's always a group of people that are fucking idiots. Everybody has them. I mean, I love going to rock shows. Some, some of the best people go to rock shows. But even people there, they're fucking idiots. I just don't want them, like, uh, ruining some of the businesses by, you know, just acting the fool. I'm sure that there's, you know, since you work at a venue, I'm sure that there are there are people, uh, there are businesses around there that they they do enjoy that they're there. Uh, that you guys are there, but other times it's like fuck, Ugh, fuck these guys. Look at look at who look who look who's coming now and because of them or whatever act is there. This is what happens to my business tonight. You know, uh, you know, some dude pissing in the fucking in their store or some shit because they're too fucking drunk. Shit like that is gonna is gonna get fucked up. Parking's gonna be horrible. There's parking's already horrible in that neighborhood anyway. The Uber is gonna it's gonna clog up traffic. That street is. Is going to become, slow. yeah, it's going to be, I don't know, I just, yeah, I'm, I, uh, yeah, I don't feel too good about that, but maybe, maybe they, they keep some of its original, you know, integrity and hopefully, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, hopefully they get the message. A lot of people are expressing that they are disappointed and sad. Well, yeah, you know what it is? It's that they're, these people are true San Franciscans. And uh, this is what happens yeah. when an outside company comes in and tries to change a lot of shit. That, uh, Man, I, I've seen some great old. movies there. Yeah, well, yeah, so have I. But it, it's always some company that really doesn't care about the neighborhood. They're just going to come and impose their ideas on them, whether they like it or not. Um, what else you got, bro? All right. So um, my pull list, I got, I got some gifts. Um, so I got this... Uh, Oh, nice. Oh, nice. What, which, tribute, which number is that? This is the new Hulk series, Hulk number one. Oh, no, no doubt. And Ooh. I got to thank Michelica for that. Um, she gave me this variant. Um, and it's basically a tribute to Hulk 340, um, which was originally by Todd McFarlane. And it's also a picture of Wolverine, and you can see the Hulk's reflection in ah, his claws. Yeah. Yeah, so... Right there. McFarlane? And then, uh, huh? You said McFarlane did that? McFarlane did the original. Oh, okay. So that's just, it's, ba it's based off of his original. All right. Yeah. That's oh, and then um, also I have this uh, Kate Bishop print. Oh, that's fucking sweet. Yeah. It's just a, it's really nice. Also, courtesy of Michelica. Thank you again. Um, my buddy, my friend, gave me this one. Oh, man. Amazing Spider-Man. This is the first John Romita Spider-Man. Classic cover. This is a 60s book. Uh, what is uh, it, 12 what number? Number 39. Damn. God damn. Yeah. So, like, Spider-Man is now in the 800s, maybe? Yeah. So, that, that tells you how long ago this was. Um, and this is just a crap classic cover, you know? Goblin has... Got Peter Parker. He's got Spider Man unmasked and captured. And, and the the I look believe, on Goblin's face is great too, man. Right. Yeah. I believe uh, I believe John Romita his first issue after he took over Steve Ditko. Oh no shit! The That's original, good... yeah, the original Spider Man artist was Steve Ditko. Um, and uh, I picked up this one myself because I I wanted to get it. The first appearance of of uh, Red Wolf. 
Native American hero. Red Wolf. Yeah. Aveng Avengers, what number? Avengers number 80. 15 oh. center. Damn. Fucking 15 bad. center. Can you believe that? People used to pay 15 cents for that. Now they're paying, what, two ninety five, three ninety. No, uh, four four ninety nine, three ninety nine. God damn! Yeah, I think the average is three ninety nine. What was um, it? Red Red Hawk. Red Wolf. Red Wolf. Red. I, I just want to make everything a hawk these days. Red Red Wolf, and then uh, last but not least. Oh I yeah! It came in. It came in. I, I can I can see that. A little bit dark. I'm sorry. The, my that's uh, my the year. Is. is that the year? That's year two. The year is that year the two? Is that, is that the year two one? Year two figure. Yep. No doubt. It's based on on this cover. Nice. And who did the sculpt on that? Is that uh? Is that just who's that? DC Light? That's a, that's a McFarlane, right? That's a McFarlane toys. Yeah. Um. So what happened with this was, uh, and it happened to Ray too. We ordered them originally from. Target. I remember the story. Yeah, we. I think we talked and, about that. And then they just sent us an email saying we we don't we're canceling your order because they didn't have it. And and then about uh, about a month ago or so, um, I found out that Target had them back in stock. I think I saw it. It must have been about like three in the morning. I was up like on a weekend, just kind of like chilling and you know, just doing nothing. And then I, I, I think I saw um, an Instagram post saying that Target had them. So I, I just kind of like at three in the morning, just ordered it right away and then totally forgot about it. And then just the other day it came. It came? In. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I totally forgot that I had did this at like three in the morning. And so I'm glad I did because I, now I got one and I, I believe it sold out again. Mm -hmm. And I, I totally forgot that I was that I even did this. It was like one of those where you wake up and then you go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I that that uh, that image of Batman is is by McFarlane is just a classic image, and that toy, that figure is uh is basically where that comes from, and uh, it's really cool, man. I'm 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 really like uh, really happy with that. Nice little purchase, man. You know, like, um, yeah. So, so I don't know. That's dope. Pretty cool, you know. I love that long draping cape, and uh, yeah, that's that's you know, trademark, man. Yeah, I was very happy to get this. So, nice little thing, and uh, just gotta find some space for it, you know. Cool. <laughs> All right. What All you right. got? Right. What you got? So uh, before I, I go into what I got, uh, let me see. Big Leo says Image had some dope covers. They fucking they did, man. I think the the yeah. thing that I love about Image covers, the coloring. They I think they started doing that digital coloring. Uh, they were one of the first to probably use it, uh, like almost for every single book that they did, uh, yeah. and it really showed. Uh, it showed in the pick covers. I know I remember I remember seeing Cyberforce that it, it really looked like that. Uh, not too much of the Teixeira stuff, like with the Max. That was it was it was more like uh, almost like chalk, the way if I if I remember it right. But uh, yeah, dude, the colors and 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 those image covers were were fucking phenomenal. Uh, let me see, it's a dark day for the Castro Theater. The history alone from Lori. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It, it's gonna change. A lot of shit's gonna change, and it sucks. People then get mad because they're like, "Oh, you're you're resistant to change." I'm like, "No, I'm not resistant to change. I'm resistant to when they do bad shit." Right. Uh, so, yeah, so don't do bad shit. That's just that's the whole thing. Uh, the neighborhood is totally against the changes that the Castro neighborhood yeah. has taken a hit because of the idiots that ruined Halloween. Yep, yeah. it's 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 uh it's a thing. I remember those Halloween fucking parties. But then what happens is, like I said, you always get that element uh, of people who fucking just show up and they want to start shit. You know, the Castro is not a place where you want to go fucking do a sideshow. You want to do that shit. Go fucking somewhere else, right? Go fuck off in San Leandro. Go fuck off in the <laughs> like that. Don't 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 bring that shit to the fucking city. Don't you know? Especially you know, not to that neighborhood. It it, it it's 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 like one of those neighborhoods. It's like North Beach. Uh, it's the Castro. It, it's uh, you know, the mission's different. The mission's actually different. You, if they wanted to do that, why don't they do that with the York Theater? Right. 
right? They have the York Theater. It hasn't been doing. I, if, I don't know if I it's mean, still right now. It's probably a fucking parking lot. They could have did that with the Latino Theater, but no. To be honest, I, I work at you know I work at the live music venues. I work at at two live music venues, and to be honest, we have enough in San Francisco. In the city of San Francisco itself, it's seven by seven miles, right? Yeah. And we're not saying there's there's more there's more than one live music venue per square mile. Because yeah. you have a ton. You have Warfield, Regency, Fillmore, the Masonic, Bimbos, Masonic, Bill Graham Civic Auditorium, Independent. You know, it's just it has me. We have music venues, but yeah, it's just bottom it, of the hill. You know, it's like. There, there's plenty of places to go see music. I love music. It's, you know, going to live shows is is in yeah, my but, top. You know, but a one lot of my those favorite places, things to do. A lot of those places, hey. other than the, other than the ones that are like in, uh, like you know the, like the downtown areas or like in the Fillmore areas or off of Market Street or a little bit further up in in like the the TL. I look at those areas and I look at bottom of the hill. They're all other than those like bottom of the hill and all the other ones are like in the middle of nowhere where you have parking. You can get to it really easily. Yeah. But, but not Castro. Th I mean, I drive Castro no. street. Sometimes when I used to have to go to work, the, yeah. the, it's going to be too much stop and go too much extra traffic. I know the people in that area don't want to see shit like that uh, to, to make their lives a lot harder just because somebody wants to fucking get a quick buck. You know, fuck that. Keep it, keep it a movie theater, you know? So uh, let me just proceed, you know, get off my soapbox and uh, jump into uh, my pull list. So, yes, please. Uh, I'm glad you're here for this. All right. So Ray gave me Deadly Class to read. Oh. I'm, I've, I'm up to book eight right now. I think that's, I think I'm on the last trade. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm up to book eight and it's a great story. You know, you guys would have been able to get me to read that if you guys just told me, uh, like, just the basics of, uh, it's a story of, like, you know, kids going to an assassin school. Oh, the, yeah. fact that, the, the fact that you guys used that I'm Nicaraguan, half Nicaraguan, to try to, to get me to read this kills me. Because other than his hate for Ronald Reagan, there's nothing that leads me to believe that he's Nicaraguan. Nothing. Uh, they right. don't. Re they don't reference that he's. They probably reference that he's from like Manawa once or maybe or whatever, or whatever town that he's from. But there's nothing that leads me to think that he's that he's like Nicaraguan. But the other thing, from, he's different from you and I, though. No, he's no, 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 no. And, uh, you, no, I get that he's an orphan. But the the difference, it, the difference is his age that he came over and everything. I know somebody like that, and it's my older brother. And just nothing about the way he talks or anything uh, screams like the like like if you're gonna write some somebody you gotta know the character. And I do applaud Remender for including somebody from Nicaragua as a main character. I I yeah. super applaud it. But it's just uh, so you don't whitewash a character. Um, that's the my problem with it. Uh, I I, I want to relate to it. And I couldn't. There's nothing about uh, Marcus Arguello that I, I can I can relate to. The fact that you use the the last name Arguello because it's of a uh, of Alexis Arguello, the great uh, Nicaraguan uh, boxer. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, there's it just it, nothing about it screamed Nicaragua to me personally. I'm still not done with it, but in the la in book eight, all I see is pictures of like him. He's still hating Reagan, and I understand that that was a big thing for people from Nicaragua. But it's not the sole purpose of people in Nicaragua's uh, their hate. It's not just that. It's a lot more. Uh, other thing that bothered me was, uh, and I'll tell you this, I love the story. It's great. It's yeah. great. They didn't need to use San Francisco. There's nothing discernible about the book that shows me San Francisco other than, like, so far four to five panels out of eight trades which is very upsetting for me because I love this city. I shit. I, I, I'll watch Bullet, which is a very underrated movie. You know, not underrated, but overrated movie. But it has one of the best chase scenes of all time, best car chase uh, scenes of all time, because it goes through multiple parts of the city and lets me see it. That's on film, and I get that. But when it comes to comic books, 
uh, I've read books about San Francisco that have been taking place in San Francisco. And I love seeing uh, like Bruno's from the mission. You know, I love seeing uh, uh, some of the, the, the Washington Square Park with the with the church behind it as, as a backdrop for for certain panels. I love seeing certain hills and knob hills and uh, uh, just the way parts of the city look. Uh, this didn't have any feel of San Francisco to me. And although I do love the book itself, because just the way Helmet describes his fart as he fucking blows it on Saya when she, you know, She's stuck in an elevator, but he doesn't aware that she's there. And, and like, just it, it goes for four pages of him talking about this one massive fart. I thought it was fucking hilarious. I, oh, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't hold my uh, my laughter. But I was, I'm so far, I'm very disappointed. The fact that it's a Nicaraguan character, and there's nothing about it that I can like relate to. Uh, I, if, if well, I was just kind of like saying my honest opinion about it. I wasn't really trying to sell it to you. But if I am trying to sell it to somebody now, I would say, I, I wouldn't focus on the fact that he's Nicaraguan, he's of Nicaraguan descent, and he's in San Francisco in the 80s, and he works at a comic book store. Well, and, the comic book know, store was great. I like that. Right? Uh, the, the what What really makes the book so good is just, uh, okay, well, I think Rick Remander wrote it in San Francisco because he used to live on, he used to live really? on, yeah, I he think, did. like on Irving or something. He used he to did. live in the city for a long time, and and um, he he uh, he grew up during that time, you know, in the late mm-hmm. '80s, early '90s, yeah. right? Um, and and if if you have the first trade, in the first trade, he has an introduction at the very end of the I, book. I, I read the whole thing. It's friggin' fantastic because he talks about how he witnessed. He he's from Arizona, I believe. Yeah, and, he and then he, witnessed. He was a. It was like a punk. It was like a punk rock kid getting hated on. It's, it's just. Order. It's, it's, it's he every. Get bullied. It's, it's, it's every trope. Get killed. It's every yeah, dude. I mean, we all been there. We all we've all been to high school. High school hasn't changed. As many years, because the thing is, kids are assholes. That's just all. And the thing is, that's what I love about the book. It shows how much kids are assholes, how much kids right. want to be accepted by by certain groups and how they'll create groups and they'll and they'll use their knowledge of people, their secrets to get over on them and and kind of use them as in control. Yes, this is this is high school. And I fucking loved all that. And I get all that. I'm just upset with the fact that you use San Francisco and I don't see San Francisco. The artist. It's, I, I don't blame Remender on that part. I blame Remender for not connecting with a Nicaraguan uh, character. I, I I just don't like that the artist... I mean, dude, fucking pick up a postcard and fucking look what Hate Street looks like and you know make that part of your backdrop or some shit. I liked the, that one shot of Fillmore. Yeah, it was great. You guys are right. It's fucking awesome. But... Other than right. that, it's it's uh and it's the book the book's really good. I'm not gonna hate I'm not gonna hate on the actual book itself. I'm just yeah. saying that because of something so important like that to me, you know, seeing a Nicaraguan character, uh, it just it it failed. It failed for me on that the, for the connection. So yeah, that's just it. But it's a great book. I do I do enjoy it. It's I it's mean, a, the, the story about a high school of assassins. Yeah, that's and great. The relationships they have and the characters. Um, that that's pretty cool. Yeah, the way I'm gonna describe it in the future to anybody is more like he happens to be Nicaraguan. He happens to be from San Dude, Francisco. It's it's. Um, I'll, tell you, because, I'll tell you what it is. Because that wasn't. I mean, that when I first read it, though, I was kind of like San Francisco. He's Nicaraguan. I was just like so kind of like I get pleasantly you. surprised. You know, like because I'm like. I've never seen that in comic books, you know, and me being a kid who's, you know, parents are Nicaraguan and, and, you know, I'm, I'm of Nicaraguan descent and, you know, grew up in San Francisco and it it was just kind of like a nice thing, but I wasn't really looking for it to be completely Uh, accurate as far as. No, no, I'm not not saying completely accurate. I'm not saying completely accurate, but I'm saying connect with me, bro. That's uh, for somebody who look. I, I look at I look at Avengers comic books and everything, and I've seen them draw 
streets of New York. I've never been to New York, but I've seen so many postcards and I've seen so much of like Broadway and everything. They get these things right. I've seen locations in Hell's Kitchen for Daredevil that I have seen postcards where I'm like, oh, wow, they really took their time to actually kind of look at. Scene of the Crime by Brubaker and Phillips. Yeah. Phillips, Phillips knows the city. It feels like he 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 might have lived out here, or he came out here to visit to kind of get an idea of what to write. There are other there's other X Men uh, books that were in, taking place in the city. Venom, Lethal Protector, took place in the city, and I still saw a lot of I, I connect with those books with when it comes to actual San Francisco than I did with this one. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that you can't just use the name of a city and not really draw it. You know, uh, you can't just draw fucking just you know. And plus, by the way, Daily City is not spelled D-A-I-L-Y. All right? It's D-A-L-Y. He, he, he fucked that one up, and I was like, ah, you motherfucker, you're not from here. So, but yeah, otherwise, it's, it's, it's a good book. It's just personally speaking, especially that the show fucking totally fucked it all up, too. The easiest way for me to describe this show or describe this book easily would have been a rated R Harry Potter that takes place in in a school of assassins instead of a school of magic. That's yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's that's a good all way to is. describe it. Yeah, that's the best way to describe this. And I do, I, I and I am enjoying it. I don't want to get it twisted. I don't want to get it wrong. It's just somebody who happens to be Nicaraguan, you know, or half. I I just wanted something. They don't. They don't. They don't. He doesn't. Uh, they don't cuss like us. I, I'll tell you this. My Mexican side. Uh equates more with maria than than uh than marcus uh maria's a great character uh that's funny because like maria's mexican and uh marcus is nicaraguan i'm like i hope you guys hook up because maybe i can be born so <laughs> you know you know what i mean you know what i mean yeah yeah okay uh, then they have part two and then it's a uh, little ricky running crazy at king's dominion so uh, yeah, but it's a it's a good book. I, I I would recommend it to people, but I'm just not going to recommend it in a way where I'm using. I would mention Nicaragua for somebody who is Nicaraguan or Latino. Well, there are there also, are great Latinos, though, but I wouldn't mention I, I wouldn't mention that it's a great San Francisco book either because it's not. But it's also, a great book. I I mean I think that Remender though, like of course it's going to be from his perspective. He's a white guy, right? And no, I, I get that. I asked him about that. I said, "How'd you come up with this idea of a Nicaraguan kid in San Francisco?" And you know, I found out he lived in San Francisco, but he has a friend who's uh, who's Nicaraguan, and um, you know, I told him, "I go, you're you're you know, you're I'm going to tell people that you're writing about me," and he just laughed. He said, "Go ahead," you know, yeah. but. But to be honest, um, you know, he he said it was it was from a friend and stuff. I, I, and, I'd and, hate to meet his know. friend. You know, he's probably some kind of fucking you know reverse QAnon or talking about fucking uh, politics now because all this kid was obsessed with was fucking just killing Reagan. And I was like, okay, I yeah, I, I understand. Well, but there's, but there's, he also has a, a direct reason for no. I get it. It, it didn't dude. have to do with Nicaraguan politics. No, 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 no. The it, reason no, why no, he didn't. wanted to kill Reagan was something else. No, I and, get that. I get, you know, but that, like, but that's still that's still his personal politics that takes politics into effect. It doesn't change the fact, you know. But it's just I didn't like that. That's what it felt like. That was his whole motivation. I gotta kill Reagan. I'm like, yeah, I love the fact that he was like, I'm gonna kill Ronald Reagan at the very beginning of the book. I was like, that's great. Uh, but <laughs> other than that, I mean, you, you, they didn't really have anything. So uh, let me see other things that I have. Uh, there's a movie. God, I fucking love this movie. I watched it last night. It's so fucking stupid. Uh, it's it really is. I love bad movies. It's called Mystery Team. Now, Mystery Team, I believe it's on Amazon Prime right now. Uh, so it's a live action. Just think of if they did an Adult Swim version of Scooby Doo. Instead of no dog, it's just three guys that are teenagers that are still acting like eight-year-old detectives. And <laughs> they, they fucking say, gee, golly whiz, and, uh, oh, Chinese checkers, oh, fiddlesticks. And they, it's with uh, Donald Glover uh, of Childish Gambino fame. Uh, you know, he's the creator of, I think, the show Atlanta. Um, Good show. 
Yeah, he's, I think he's in it too, right? I think I'm not sure if he created, but I know he's in it. He's in uh, it. He's in it, and yeah, he, he's creator, right. right? It's great. It's a great show. It's so, so good. So you also got Aubrey Plaza in it uh, in this oh, movie. Yeah. So you got Donald Glover, you got Aubrey Plaza, you got yeah. Ellie Kemper. Uh, she's fucking hilarious. She plays this over fucking like aged person and like wears like uh, what is it coverall overalls and she's just like riding around a little bike saying hey action team and she just says or hey mystery team there's a mystery going on at the at the fish fish factory something smells fishy and it is they're supposed to like take her seriously it's just it's a live action fucking adult swim version of fucking scooby-doo you got ben schwartz in this bobby moynihan uh yeah, uh, John Daly. It's fucking so stupid. It's from 2009, so they use a lot of stupid shit. I mean, there's a point where they, they go into a gentleman's club, and there's some kid that they've been, like, harassing all the time for some information earlier in the movie, and he's just like, hey, yeah, what, you're like, what are you doing here? And, and, and he's just like, my mom works here. You know, it's better than fucking shaking your ass on the corner. And they're like, what? And then he looks at the at the stripper lady on stage and he goes, hey, Jill, take care of my boys here. The stripper comes down and she starts try, trying to like grind on these guys. And they're like, oh, my God, no, because they're, you know, they're like, they're just fucking the biggest fucking dickhead dorks in the fucking world. So mystery team, it's fucking stupid. But it's fucking awesome at the same time. I, I fucking I love I love stupid shit like this. Uh, What's so that on? Amazon Prime is where I saw it. You might find it yeah. on uh yeah you might find it on like Tubi or something. But Amazon Prime, I, I told you, like yeah, Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime is the is, is a good place to to find shit. Oh, we are gonna go to the two hour mark. Sorry, Frank. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I was gonna do the hidden gem this week. Uh, something personal. Uh, but I'm gonna. See Skip that. Uh, I, I actually want to be here. Uh, I want Ray here when I uh, share that gem. Uh, so sorry, Alex. You can, you're going to be here too, hopefully, for that for that next show. I, I definitely do want to do it. Um, so we're going to go right now to... Let me see if I can find the right one. Is this the right one? Oh, Hidden Gem. Look at that. Nice. Uh, fucking, uh, fucking, who, who is that? Is that Eclipso? Eclipso. Yeah, that's Eclipso, right? Yeah. I fucking yeah. love Eclipso. Yeah. That's, that's a fucking sick drawing, man. So yeah, he's got the Hidden Gem. So... What's your hidden gem this week, Alex? Um, okay, so my hidden gem, uh, I got one thing that you'll reckon. I got two things one, that I'll go really quick. I got one thing that you'll recognize. Oh, man. Dude, I fucking love that. Charlie and Humphrey. Oh, dude, I was, I was trying to watch those on YouTube the other day. They made a comic about it, dude, and if... Here in San Francisco, in seventies and eighties, these were characters on on the local channel too. Yes, and they would have like lessons. Like, um, I, I remember there was one where I think he takes something from somebody, and he's like, "That's something you don't do, borrowing without asking." Yes, and and they would have these lessons, you know, um, and, and yeah. So I I had to get this right. Like, and I had to show you, you know, especially that you're, you know, you're here, Rick. Yeah, and, you know. I fucking love that one, man. Uh, yeah. they're, they're, they're dear and close to my heart. It, it, those are those, uh, those Channel 2, right before they came back to your show or they, they broke yeah. to commercial. You'd see these during the commercials, which was fucking great. Uh, this yeah. is, I mean, those lessons, dude. I mean, people think that they're kind of hokey, but it's good to learn, like, little lessons like that. Uh, oh, and, yeah. And, and give those especially things to kids. For kids. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I think kids I think kids need that nowadays. I think kids are fucking they're like, "Oh, they're desensitized." I'm like, "No, yeah, you can still teach them good lessons, but um yeah, you, you yeah, guys just choose not to." Any uh, uh any 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 viewers should ch uh, definitely YouTube uh Charlie yes. and Humphrey. Pat McCormick. Pat McCormick, Charlie, Charlie and, Humphrey. and Humphrey. Yeah. yeah. It's basically a horse and a dog. <laughs> yeah, they're, right? but yeah, they're they're fucking awesome though, man. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking, okay. That's dope. And I just picked up this book. Oh, Layla Star? The Many Deaths of Layla Star. Oh. The Many Deaths hmm. of Layla Star. That sounds Star. like a cool fucking uh, title, man. Oh, man. It's so, like, it was on, 
on all kinds of YouTubers and all kinds of comic book fans. They have rated this their number one book of 2021. It's a limited series by this author named Ram V. Ram V? Uh, Ram, Ram V. V okay. like victory. Okay. Ram V is on fire right now. He's writing uh, Swamp Thing. He's writing... Uh, he wrote this uh, vampire story called... Uh, something... Uh, what is it? These... These Savage Shores, I believe, is what it's called, a vampire story. These Savage and, Shores? I might check that yeah, one out. Yeah, and everyone says it's great. I haven't read it, but Ram V is on fire. He's like, he's just killing it. He's killing the game. So everyone was talking about the many deaths of Layla Starr, and I wanted to read it. And basically is the, the goddess of death, she gets, it starts off, she gets canned. She loses her job. Because a child is going to be born in the world who's going to develop, who's going to invent immortality, making death moot, making death not necessary. Hmm. Interesting. So, uh, so, you put uh, death out of a job. Yeah. So basically death has a, has a job. So then, so then death, so then there's this person named Layla Starr who dies. And the go goddess of death kind of takes over her body, takes over Layla Star, and comes to Earth with the plan to kill that kid so that immortality will never be invented. Oh. It's... <laughs> That's kind of so, That's kind of trippy. It's so good, <coughs> man. And, and so what happens is, as Layla Star, she keeps dying. And then she comes back. Every, like, she comes back. Layla Star is like resurrected, and they're like, "What?" You know, like, but it's basically death inhabiting Layla Star. So, That's is it a title. series? It's a limited series. It's like oh, okay. five issues. It's like five issues. So, oh, so there's not going to be more trades after this one. This is a one uh, co complete no, entitled storyline. Oh, a one good shot deal. I mean, maybe they might, might you, maybe they might uh, make some more stories about it, but um. You know, everyone was saying like, "Oh, it'll break." It'll, it's kind of like sad. It's like the ending will make you cry. And I was like, "Okay, let me let me see if it it'll, it'll hit me in the feels." It was. It, it really did. It was like, "Wow," you know. Um, I mean, basically, you know, the lesson of the book is, you know, you got to live your life, and and uh, and 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 precious. It's you know, you only live once, and you know, you gotta. You got to love it for what it is. Um, it, it's just, it's a really good book. I highly recommend it. Um, I think I'll, if, pick, I'll, I'll pick that up. Uh, if, I, think I'm gonna get that. I don't know. Have you have you ever read uh, Sandman by Neil yeah, Gaiman? a long time ago, dude. That's one of those okay. books that, like, it, it was introduced to me, I think, when, like, like in high school. So, like, that's when I was, like, getting into it because of a, a friend of mine. She was always like, oh, dude, you got to read Sandman. It's fucking great. I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll get to it. I'm, I'm, I'm reading fucking, reading X-Men right now. Leave me alone. So Neil Gaiman mastered the use of, um, the use of, uh, like, fairy tales and um, mythology to, to, to write tales of morality and tales uh, and, like, parables and and this is just that kind of book you okay. know that where where they you know it reminds me kind of like of sandman where you have these characters that you know they just get thrown in there and they have this complex story and there's a lesson behind it and it's it's really good i mean it yeah it 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 has an amazing ending it it's just i don't know it was just a it has a good feeling to it you know i I, I didn't expect it to kind of like, you know, after I first read it, I was like, oh, what was the big deal? Okay, it was it was good, but it wasn't like everybody was saying. But then I keep thinking about it, and I'm kind of like, wow, that's that's pretty good, man. Um, and there's this quote, there's this quote in it that's just, that's just amazing. It's like um, this quote that basically says... Um, what is what does the quote say? Let me look it up real quick. It says, <laughs> you look, you just reminded me of Kevin Bacon and fucking Footloose. What did what did David do? What did David do? Let me look in the book. <laughs> okay, it goes. This is the quote. It goes. I want to arrive at the end with scars to show for rash decisions made by a careless heart. 
and and that poem is called Scars by Akur Puri, I guess. Um, hmm. Oh, man. It, 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 you know, it just talks about how, like, you know, in life, you know, like, at the end, you know, we're all going to have, like, our flaws and our, our things. And, you know, just basically, that's living life. You know, you're going to go through it. You're going to go through heartbreak. You're going to go through um, mistakes. You're going to have regrets. You're going to feel good about things. And that's basically kind of like, I want to go through the process. I want to go through through the ups and downs. You know, that's that's how I interpreted that. And that's how I interpreted the story. So that's my my other hidden gem. I think I think so, I'm gonna probably have to pick up uh, that book or These Savage Shores if it's a, like a good vampire book. I think I'm. That's that's what I hear. Yeah. Be the book I'm gonna pick up if Ram V's good. You know, that's what I look. I look forward to good uh, watch uh, reading good writers. Uh, but yeah, so I think I mean, you would like it. I think you would like Layla Star, yeah. the many deaths of Layla Star. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out next time. Hopefully, I get to. I might go tomorrow, man. I'm off tomorrow, so maybe I'll just make a quick trip. Uh, while, uh, while I'm out, go. Yeah, tell go, them I sent you. Go to comic book still. All right, so uh, let me see. Of course, you got it. oh well, it's not a hidden gem. It's me hanging out in the horror section like Randy from Scream and shit. It's an <laughs> unsolicited Rick pick. All right, so I was going on. You know, right now I'm on this move, this thing of looking for movies that I've not, I haven't seen, and then I just saw a trailer. I always look at where it says movies you might like. So I was on Amazon Prime yesterday. And I came across a movie called The Night Eats the World. I'm not sure if you've heard of this uh, movie, uh, Alex. It's, uh, it's, it's a movie from France. Uh, oh. Yeah. It's another. Oh. It, and you, you guys have heard me use the term all the, all the time when I talk about, like, you know, I'm like, is it a fucking pretentious French movie where they fucking follow a red balloon everywhere? All right. No, this is not a pretentious French movie. I fucking love this movie. This movie is, <laughs> this movie's fucking really good, dude. It reminds me of, uh, parts of it remind me of Fight Club. It, they're not blowing oh, okay. shit. Yeah, they're not blowing shit up. It's just the more psychological parts of Fight Club. It, it reminds me of that. Uh, and yeah, the, instead of like, you know, rolling around on a bike inside his building, he's just fucking running in his building, which is great. But, uh, it's, it starts out like, kind of like a Shaun of the Dead. It's like any other night, you know, he goes to visit like an ex-girlfriend and, uh, she wants to talk to him and he's just like, why am I here? It's a fucking party. I just want to pick You know, I want you to get your things and he goes, give me my tapes. I just want my tapes. I want to go home. And then the boy, the new boyfriend comes in, you know, hugging her. Oh, what's up? And it pisses the dude off. He doesn't want to be there, right? So the, the, the cut cuts to him just like, fuck this party. He, he goes into this one little back office where he knows his tapes are, locks the door, starts looking for the tapes. Uh, and he sits down and he, you know, just dozes off. Uh but while he's dozing off, you hear a commotion and then you start hearing, you know, just shit goes to hell. Wakes up the next day, opens the door, blood everywhere. Doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, starts, you know, walking around the house and now he sees people fucking being chased. He looks uh, he looks across the street, sees, you know, zombie or, or a zombie running around like a fucking thing trying to kill this family. Family runs out. Zombies get the family, of course, you know. But he knows that he's like he's stuck and he has this place where you know there's multi it's a multiple house dwelling so he's going to different places and gathering everything uh similar to that other movie on netflix called hashtag alive where the where the dude's inside oh, yeah. Of, yeah he's inside of his like his apartment building not that big of an apartment building but this is more like a just like a uh an apartment like a house that has like, like my apartment building well, well that's more like a lot that's more like a live this one would probably be more like mine. It's like an eight unit kind of thing, but it it looks like a giant like fucking house, uh, which is cool because it's that like old school uh, uh, like French architecture. Uh, it has like you know the one of the old school fucking like uh, elevators running up through the middle, uh, and it, 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 dude, it's fucking sick. Uh, so the main guy, his name is Sam, played by this dude named Anders Danielson. Uh, this this guy you you're you're living with him 
you can see that music is a big part of his life because that's how he's able to deal with this. At one point, he starts keeping track. And uh, I think at one point, I counted that he was like a, almost like six weeks by himself. And, you know, he was doing pretty good. But he's in there for like quite a long time. And it gives you that. I thought it was going to be like 28 days later for a second. You know, somebody was going to come. and But it's, it's a, that feeling of loneliness. Like, how do you how do you deal with being lonely that long thinking that you are the last person on earth? Uh, cause he doesn't really see too many people and those people that he does see fucking as they're walking away, you know, fucking zombies are fucking just, you know, getting them. Uh, but yeah, dude, it's called a night eats the world. I don't want to ruin it for anybody, you know, of course, but, uh, I definitely am hoping that, uh, it does well. Uh, like I just want to get the word out there. So, yeah. Uh, check it out. Maybe I'll check it out tonight. Yeah, night. The it night. Amazon. It's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, okay. the night eats the world. Like I said, I, I, I'm always you know, the whole thing about French movies. I'm like, yeah, it's too pretentious. It, it, I, I can't be. <laughs> yeah, it, but I didn't know it was French. I didn't know it was French. It was great. So, uh, I thought it was fucking sick. So. Yeah, let me see. I got uh, Lori, finally. You know, in Japan, broken objects are often repaired with gold. The flaw is seen as a unique piece of the object's history, which adds to its beauty. That reminds me of that quote, Alex. All right. Uh, and uh, Christo, that's a typical Parisian building. All right. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... Uh, that's, that's cool. That's I'll definitely check that out. The night, the night eats the world. Uh, so, yeah, folks, uh, that's uh, show number 113. We kept it close to two hours, so it's not quite a Frank special, but we tried, Frank. We tried. So, you know, just once again, uh, you know, I, I, just for, for one last refresher for everybody. Just remember, hit that like button. Hit that like button. Tell your hit, friends. Hit that like button. Tell your friends. Tell hit your that family. like button. And hit that like button, all right? I just want to make sure we get all of those people taken care of. We want kids bitten by spiders. We want, uh, we want, you know, uh, scientists irradiated. We want Southern Supreme to get his red, red wine with the fucking, uh, you know, with the rum inside. So yeah, we want all that shit to happen. So hit the hit the like button, everybody. So uh, yeah, that's gonna. Well, wait, let me see. We got one. Thank you. Go, go Niners! Yes, yes, go Niners! Go Niners! That's that's a given. That's a given. Go Niners! So that's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we will see you hopefully thanks back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for coming out, Alex. You know, I know this was a little bit short notice, but you know, I'm glad that Optimistic Prime and Negatron can. Uh... Oh, we got along this time. You know, we didn't fucking really fight, other than when we got to Deadly Class. So that's a good thing. It's <laughs> a good thing. We didn't fight. We didn't yeah, we fight. Really argued, but you know, like I said, you know, you're you're Skip Bayless, and I'll be. You know, I don't want to say. I Steven. prefer Cisco and Ebert. So. Mm, I don't like those guys. <laughs> I know they like Dark City, but I don't like those guys. You know, you know, <laughs> we could be the old. Well, no, the the old Kaji couple inside the fucking uh, the old men. That's me and Ray. You know, right. just shit. Yeah, in uh, in the Muppets. But yeah, so it was fun, Alex. Thanks for coming out, uh, everybody. Right just on, remember, just remember to hit like and subscribe. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, go Niners, and we'll go see. Niners. You, we'll see you next time. Yep, yep. We'll see you next Take time.